becomes a little bit annoying too, as sometimes a chipset configuration is randomly strangely corrupt and resulting in somehow fast but slightly unstable configuration. Let's try to solder this NVRAM thing out and dremel those battery pins open. So this is off. These ISA cards really get hard in and out. This is not the best equipment, but we are not a hardware company, so we only have some emergency things in case of. Vacuum pump thing, in my experience, does not work very well, but anyway, I will try to use it. In my experience, it works slightly better with some fresh solder on there. That uh, new solder also gets the old solder out. So let's see how this goes. Hmm, underestimated it in my hand before that. So that is the problem with YouTube. If you just do it without checking the videos, then it doesn't look very awesome on the YouTube video. This side is against the sunshine as well. But if you if you're considering this yourself, then you probably already know how to solder. The nice thing is, this NVRAM has some pins not soldered. Not only does this help us, that we need to unsolder less pins. This even allows us to practice because um, I have to confess I usually do it slightly wrong. That was better. Because it's not even so sunny today. This is really a little bit unfortunate. Too ceiling light. Lighting is really difficult in videos. This pump thing only works if it is really closed. And what I usually do, because I always think fast is better, but this appears not to be true. But naturally one always wants to do it very fast, or at least I. And it works better if you go really straight, that it is more closed, that the vacuum sucks it more out of the through hole. Yeah, thank you very much. And then stands there completely. Yeah, as I had already in past experience, um, solder is not coming out very nicely from the through holes as usual. But if it comes out, it this is of course ridiculous here, this standing solder mountain. It's of course also really ridiculous, not only this built-in battery, but then they also solder it to the logic board. If it would at least be socketed, it would already be less pain to get it out, obviously. I hope the warmer the surrounding board gets, the more will come out as it's not cooling so quickly. You always need to make sure that you have no residual sticking out there, otherwise you obviously press those onto the PCB again. But we're making progress. Yeah, this uh, old-fashioned through hole stuff is really not so nice to solder. Um, when you watch Louis Rothman soldering with hot air on SMD, make logic boards, it actually looks much easier than this old-fashioned through hole stuff. I wonder if it would have been easier to use a hot air station. However, I once desoldered a whole pin grid array PGA socket for use on my own DSP board. And so I unsoldered this socket because I think at 20 years ago I couldn't buy it anywhere in single quantities or small digit quantities. And this was really hard to get out in one piece, so maybe using uh, hot air to unsolder it may destroy the IC. Let's continue this operation here. Probably not getting much freer this through holes. What I usually do then is use a screwdriver and lift it a little bit off the PCB. But the problem is the bigger the IC, the harder this is. This is probably where hot air could help. So I invented a new unsoldering technique because I really couldn't get this pins free there. Um, so I had this technical drawing pen laying here with this press through lines or whatever. So I pressed this on the pins. So I was heating it with the soldering iron and then pressing down this pin into the middle shaft there. So that the round metal tubes there would press the tin away there. And that surprisingly did not work so bad. It's really a pain. I have already this uh, 
out here now half but it's also really hard to get in there to move it here a little bit to support it with something like a screwdriver really a pity that they had to solder this real time clock battery thing on the main motherboard I only hope all pins come out it would of course be okay I have it out let's hope all the through hole wires are still okay even some more on the camera <coughs> The problem is now to get this into this precision thing, but okay, it actually works. I only have the small ones in stock from old supplies, so I cut those in the middle now. And then we solder this in there. Now the problem is getting the new ones in. I also used a little bit of this old copper desoldering stuff here. But this is also not the most helpful, because now there is a little bit more Soldering stuff probably not need a macro lens for this. So a little bit more of this desoldering. Uh, should I use this technique again? Okay, this is not so successful. Okay, it's mostly one pin only. Okay, wait a second, we could throw this again here. This is really unbelievable how stubborn this is. Through the wires are. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, a little bit new tinning often helps. The problem is also it still needs to work after this. Makes more sense. I get this IC out and then some um, through hole wire stuff there or some other layer in the PCB. I'm not sure if all still have the through hole wire. Oh, that was an annoying soldering job. There was one stubborn through hole pin that absolutely did not want it to get free. But now I have a nice socket in there, as I said, cut in half, as I didn't have the white one. And now we can plug in the real time clock, and then I hope it still works. I hope some through hole wire did not get destroyed. It would be really set after such a... Okay, it's, of course it's slightly angled in there. Maybe I should have soldered the cut in half uh, plugged on this IC. And this is the mess we left here from unsoldering. Yeah, let's see if it still works. So the moment of truth. How much magic smoke will we produce? Oh, it doesn't work anymore, but... Oh no. So we have something. <sighs> see if we can still save something in the CMOS and VRAM. So let's see. So even if it hopefully still works, we still need to dremel on this battery and install our own one. No, it looks like it could store it, I guess. The pin that was the most stubborn was the uh, interrupt line, I think. And maybe that's only used for alarm, as far as I would guess. So <coughs> the real time clock is this one. This is Dallas 1287. And now I will drill here into this epoxy cover stuff to free the pins where the battery is connected internally. So apparently at least this is specific for each of the different real time clocks. So you need to Google your type and uh, see where yours is connected there. And so in this style is 1287. It is apparently the one with a gap here and the next following here. Yeah, let's see how this goes. So here's this thing. The reason I drill this slightly bigger here is because I want to cut this here or drill through there at the end to disconnect the battery so that the load of the new battery will not include uh, leaking to the internally still installed battery. And as I expected, the battery has still some uh, voltage left, so we are still getting 270 microvolts, so this, this is... Uh, so I will uh, drill through there and solder only to the bottom to 
avoid leaking the new battery faster than necessary. On this side there even appears already a hole so there is air inside where the battery is uh, included on a different one from I guess ST. On a Sun Spark station it was completely filled with epoxy inside there. Now I drilled through the contact there to disconnect the internal battery. So I drilled a little bit more away for these pins to hide a bit. I want to solder this one pin there directly and the other one I will solder a wire. I hope this glue holds something. Throw this from there. So, et voila. Now on this side, nicely under the pin and cable to that pin and directly to the other pin. The first one was ground as far as I remember and the other was plus. So let's see what happens. Let's set a useful date. Let's see if it finally the reason why I tested this with the 386, of course the 386 is not that important, but it's better to test with the G board than with the Spark in practice. And in general it's anyway nice to have things in working order and not half working. doesn't warn about the CMOS battery anymore. still complains about chipset config corrupt. This is something I don't like that much. I guess this is a success that it doesn't complain about the CMOS battery anymore. Wait a second, was that without a warning? So the settings it kept. The time is running. So I guess all warnings are gone now. The through-hole wires were really ugly to work on. Yeah, all warnings are gone. Yeah, and um, thanks God on the Spark they are socketed. This is really, should also be forbidden not to socket this. And we rim so on modern boards this is not a thing anymore. It's usually on modern boards they are separate with a separate battery. It may be sync for embedded systems with appliances and signage solutions or something and uh, all, all this kind of embedded things, industrial machines, and they still sell this component. So I guess there are even new devices created that come with this kind of internal battery. Yeah, but if you design things, um, it would be really fantastic if you don't solder things without maintenance possibilities um, directly on the motherboards. This kind of replaceable, disposable things really should be socketed. And also, I noticed this the other day already, before I had much less performance now with, with some jumper sets there. Before the clock frequency was somewhat a little bit random, so with some jumper set and the CMOS settings, it's also faster than it was before. Yeah, it's rated like 60 MHz equivalent to 86 and the Sarex FastMath FPU even rated 151 MHz equivalent of an 80 to 87. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the soldering job and learned something. And don't forget to subscribe for all the next videos to come.